You know, God is so special. You know, in the fact that in a manger, a place least expected Jesus should come. And yet, the scripture had talked about this so clearly. You know, it talked about what would happen, you know. It said so clearly that he was Jesus. It was from the family of Jesse, through the house of David. He was the Messiah who fulfilled precisely what was described of him. His birth was a virgin birth, predicted to be in Bethlehem. His divine name is there, Emmanuel, the one who is so great. He, the, in, the, in the Old Testament, we also find the fact that it's talking about the presentations of gifts in, to him in the Psalms. It talks about the massive massacre of children at his birth and the attempt to try and stop him being Lord. A, a colossal attempt at trying to stop him being Lord. It talks about his escape into Egypt, and then it talks about his home being in Nazareth, a place that was despised by many people in the Jewish nation. And that his childhood would be one of poverty, that after the, after the Messiah was born, he would have the spirit-filled nature, which was so powerfully there. When we look at the account of Luke, it really spells it out so clearly. And after the birth of the Messiah, the temple would be destroyed. And Daniel, it said, in 70 years, um, times years. It's sort of a funny what days, years, it kind of gets mixed up. And Daniel, it's hard to understand and the natural thing. But it's interesting, 70 weeks of years. And guess what? AD 70, the temple was destroyed. All these things or all predicted around the birth of Christ. So when we look at it, here is Jesus. Here is Jesus. In our midst right now. And when we look at it, we, we know the world had been told so clearly and so precisely what was about to happen. But when he came... There were those that recognized it, those who understood it. There were people who were not even the true faith followers who actually ended up in a place where they recognized the birth of Jesus. And the people who claimed to be the followers of God, even though they had all the prophecies, many more prophecies than I read, they missed the point. You see, the world knew. And the Micah passage spells it out so clearly. Let's read this one together. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from, from ancient times. So he's not one who's just been born. It says about where he comes from. This is why I never understand why people try to limit Jesus to just being a man who came to save us. Because he's actually not just a man who came to save us. He's from ancient of days. Long time ago. And really, it was quite radical news that we're actually getting thrown into. Very radical news. When you look at the whole thing and we have a look at Luke, we see these words. But the angel said to them, don't be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. This was radical news. Why? Because the Jewish nation thought they were the only ones chosen by God and we were the only ones that, that have any hope in God. And yet the message rang out clear and numerous times in the prophecies and in the statements about Jesus, the clear messages for all people. So every single one of us in this room, Jesus is the hope. Jesus is the one. You see, radical news, Jesus for all cultures. He changes the world. And so often we try to lock him into the way we think, the culture view that we have. But the reality is he is beyond that. He is much more powerful than that. 
Amen? Amen? So when we look at it, you know, I want you to imagine this. Can you imagine being Joseph and Mary? If you're a guy, you can imagine being Joseph, a girl, Mary, okay? I get that. Can you imagine when things happen? When Simeon and Anna, the prophetess, said these great words, Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. She must have told people afterwards how much she thought about it because they wouldn't have been, Luke wouldn't have been able to write that unless he knew Mary's version of the story. She must have said to him, you know, it made me think every time something happened, when I was in the temple and Simeon came, when Anna came, then it made me think. And it made me wonder. And then we have the next one where both mum and dad in the place, the child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Why? Well, because he had wandered off into the temp- uh, back into the temple. They'd left town, and for three days they'd been traveling, and they were traveling with the family, and they uh, assumed that Jesus was traveling with them, and suddenly Joseph and Mary discovered that he's not there. And so they go back to town and say, Why did you do this to us, son? And what was his answer? Did you not know I'd be in my father's house? Did you not, did you not realize that this was coming? And so we, we had this comment. Mary and Joseph actually were in a place where they marveled at what was said about him because here he was sitting in the temple when they arrived and people were asking him questions and he was he was discoursing with them. He was communicating with them. He was sharing with them. Man, we think special things about our kids. We've got nothing on what Mary and Joseph had. Talk about rocking your boat. The interesting thing was that Jesus left with them at that moment, said he was obedient to them and stayed home the rest of the time. It's just a little side note there. Probably took a bit of pressure off mum and dad. They were a bit too worried when they shouldn't have been. But, but at the same time, his respect for his parents was so high. And then peace. Peace actually comes through Jesus. So clearly, we find the heavenly host. And it says, uh, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace. And, and, and some translations put in extra words there. They say, uh, peace on those whom are favoured. Actually, in the text, there's nothing about those whom are favoured at all. Nothing about it at all. It's peace. Peace being offered to every single one. It's not about God favouring some. How on earth the translators decided to put those extra words in, I have no idea. Because peace is offered to every person, not just some people that God favoured. He doesn't do favouritism. He does, he does peace for all because of Jesus. So I want to finish with this just for you to think about. Wherever you are, Jesus is here. He's here right now in the sense that we remember him. Yeah, he's in heaven. He's with the Father preparing a place for us. The represent the Holy Spirit is right here with us. But you know, he's here in the sense that everything he's talked to us about, everything he's done for us, permeates our lives. We are to be like Jesus. We are to be like him. And you know, when you look at it, if Jesus should turn up right here, right now, what do you think he would say to us? If he should turn up right here, right now, uh, how many of us would need to go, oh, Lord, oh, I'm sorry, I haven't repented yet for that thing or that thing or that thing? Whatever it is, whether it's attitudes, uh, actions, or omissions, whatever it is, if Jesus should come right now, what would that mean? And I know there are people who claim to be Christians. And if Jesus came, because of the stuff that's happening in their lives, they would be falling on their knees. And 
it would be a terrible story. Because those things are really important to Jesus. It's not about claiming the name. It's about having the name written in our lives. Spelling it out. That the birth of Jesus has so much more meaning for every single one of us. Every moment of our day. Really conscious of that this morning. I shared with some of you and asked some to pray this morning because my wife's back here now, but she's been in hospital this morning. Don't know what's happening. But it's a a very clear reminder to all of us that one day we will be meeting Jesus and we just don't know when. And when you visit hospitals, you start thinking what's happening. You know? But you know, one of the things that's important for us is we are secure in Christ, therefore safe in Christ, and eternity is ours because of Jesus. Amen? Let's give him a big, big, huge clap offering for what he's done for us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, it's awesome. God's done some great things. I want us to give special thanks to people that go out of the way an extra mile to do these services for us, for our technical teams and for our uh, musicians and singers and worship leaders. Yeah. And for Dave and Rob and others who, who came and did some work around here. Uh, God, is, God is here. Amen? Yeah. May the Lord be with you. May you know the peace that he brings. May your Christmas be one where other lives in your family be touched. And if there's been disunity with any family members... I would pray a blessing on you that you might be able to bring that peace of Christ into the midst of those situations. And where there's joy in the families, may your joy be so abundant and so clear and so celebratory that you, by the end of the day you'll say, wow, if Jesus hadn't have done what he did, we wouldn't have had such a good day. God bless you. Have a great time. <laughs>